Hi, I'm Alicia Silverstone. Welcome to my home. I'm really happy to show you all the um, very chic yet extraordinarily sustainable choices that I've made. And uh, check out my house. I moved into this house when I was 19. I bought it. The reason I was attracted to it was because the walk from the bottom up to the top was like Snow White or something. It was all woods and overgrown and madness and it had a wild feeling. And when I got to the top where um, my bedroom is, it's the views that really got me. Every time I buy something for the house, it's something old and used so that I'm repurposing everything that already exists rather than you know, buying new things um, that just takes so many resources. So I talk a lot about the stuff in my blog, on my website, um, about, you know, all things sustainable. And it just really makes me happy knowing that I can have beautiful, um, like I don't have to sacrifice beauty here. I don't have to not have things be lovely, but I'm extremely conscious of the choices I make so that I'm, my impact is as little as possible. So I tread as lightly on the earth as I can. And um, I take a lot of pride in that. It feels really good. For the outside, all the plants are um, zero scape as much as possible. So native plants, succulents, things that don't take very much water. So the idea is to use as little water as possible and to encourage as much of native um, or natural habitat to be here by having native gardens and things. So you'll see that. And then also I have gray water at my house. So the gray water makes it so that I can have lots of fruit trees because that water from the bathtub that I, when I take a bath, the water feeds the fruit trees. Um, but this wood on this house is all from a reclaimed barn and I love it. And then I was at war with woodpeckers for so many years, like five years this battle's been going on. Finally, the solution if you have woodpecker problems is this mesh on the wall. So even though it's a bummer that the house is covered in mesh, kind of if you're blurry, you can't really see it and it actually works. This is all re like recycled stone that was broken from a concrete, you know, like broken concrete, and then we just used it as steps. That's behind everything. All reclaimed wood, um, avocado tree, fig tree, and all the blueberries. I love picking berries, it makes me very happy. I put this bush blueberries in because my son, when he was little, um, was obsessed with blueberries, so. He doesn't seem to care as much anymore about that, but I still like it. Okay. Ooh, look at this blackberry. It's so pretty. There we go, I'm gonna eat it right now. Oh my God, mm-hmm. That is so yummy. This guy needs to be taken care of, he's too big. But I think that's all that needs picking today. So my compost is a mess. What happened was a bunch of bees, and I'm gonna make a YouTube video about this because I had it all on film. Bees took over my compost, and then we decided we were gonna try and relocate them. My friend got bitten, head to toe, you know, stung head to toe by these bees. It was pretty hilarious. He, not to me, he was fine with it, but I was horrified. But then I built them a box over there, and they came back. So it all worked out with the bees in the end. Permaculture is a way of working with nature and with the land to get to yield the results you want in the most efficient way. I eat a lot of plants, and so I'm constantly throwing away scraps, and so I can put all of that into my soil and make the richest compost, which is so great. When you have your own soil and you can add that to your food garden, it makes it so lovely. And um, I wanna be sustainable, so that's why I use native plants. Oh, this is... Artemisium, this is this, nat it's so beautiful. I think it's so flowy and wispy and all the sage, mm, that smells so good. And um, it's just beautiful, I think. Every um, 
spring we have kumquat margarita day because there's tons of kumquats that come off that tree, so that's fun. Here's my strawberry patch. The crazy thing is you can get buckets of these from one day out here. Like, so nice. And they repopulate themselves. So, I only planted however many I do, but they keep making more. They're not the sweetest, but they're still tasty. And they hide. It's a fun little treasure hunt. Um, and then if you look up, you see the avocado tree. Actually, it's really funny. My son built this little ch chair for himself when he was really little. But this pole right here is a cane that I gave to this tree because it was it's like 75 years old and it was sort of falling. So we gave him the cane and now he's really happy. This beautiful big tree is a persimmon tree. Um, it's always a little bit of a tricky thing to see who's gonna get the persimmons first, me or the squirrels. The squirrels, um, living with the squirrels is so funny because some days they just take all the avocados off the tree and they throw them down. And they're, they're this big, the squirrels, and somehow they're able to carry an avocado up to there. It makes absolutely no sense how a squirrel can get an avocado that is so heavy up there. I need to put cameras to witness it because it is, feels like it must have an army helping them. Um, but sometimes I come down here and I hear this noise, bam, bam, and they've thrown them down here. So then what I do is climb in here and search um, to see. I'm constantly uh, hiding in the bushes looking for, <laughs> for my avocados. Aha! They're hiding them. Oh, here's one they've already started to eat real well. I won't take that one. Leave that for them. But we share, you know, we share the avocados. Thanks for stopping by and listening to all of my sustainable efforts that make me so happy. I gotta go wash these strawberries and uh, put these avocados. Oh, that one got good. <laughs> This one's good. Um, these are so creamy. Reed avocados, they're so nice. But you know what? I started growing an avocado tree like eight years ago over there and it finally got one avocado on it. And it's such an exciting thing because it takes forever to grow an avocado tree. So I'm lucky that I have this old man here. They're so gorgeous. And they, when people leave, I always say, don't knock your head on an avocado on the way out. Bye.